All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at something called the Intermediate Value Theorem. And this is a very popular theorem that's usually covered when you're discussing the continuity of functions or continuous functions. Um, and it's a little intimidating because it's kind of long, but it's really not that all that complicated in, in its basic language, what it's trying to say. So let's, let's read it here, and then I'll, I'll explain it for us. It says, if f of x is continuous, okay, so there we go, that's why it's in this particular section or chapter on continuity, that's why it's covered here. If your function's continuous on a closed interval a to b, which means it includes its endpoints, then for any value k between f of a and f of b, there exists some value c in the interval a to b and this right here is a, a math notation a math symbol for included or is in the set or in the interval from from a to b um, such that something happens and I, I didn't give you the punchline because i want us to figure it out all right so let, let's dissect this a bit and then we'll get to the punchline so we have to have a continuous function with no breaks in it no jumps no asymptotes or anything like that it's got to be uh, a continuous curve on a closed interval then for any value k between f of a and f of b and let, let's stop right there what what is k is k an x value or a y value well hopefully you said y value because it's between f of a and f of b which are y values so uh, if we were to pick a value here i'll just kind of make one up here maybe this is k and uh, while i'm at it let me just <clears throat> go ahead and draw any old random continuous function uh, your points don't have to be here. Your function doesn't have to look like mine. Okay, I just draw some some random continuous curve between a and b. All right, then what 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 does it say? And then it says then there exists some value c. Okay, now notice since c is in the interval a to b, c is an x value. Right, that should be noted. That's this is an x value right here. Something on the x-axis such that what happens? What are we guaranteed for any value k between f of a and f of b? Well, if you look at it or think about it for a minute, hopefully what you came up with is there's at least one value c such that c maps to k, or, or, or to say it another way, if you look at k right here, you see that there's some value c that will give you that y value, right? So let, let's look at the punchline here. So there's some value c such that, here we go, f of c will give you that k regardless of any y value between f of a and f of b. Now what, what's going on here? Well basically it's just a property of continuity, right? Because if f of a is down here and f of b is up here and the function has no breaks in it, that means you must be able to get every y value in between somewhere right somewhere so that's that's what the intermediate value theorem is saying so hopefully that makes it um, make a little bit more sense now what will you be asked as a student well typically uh, you'll see like two a uh, two-part question for an intermediate value problem a lot of times one, one they'll give you a function and they'll give you an interval and they'll say is the intermediate value theorem applicable for this function on this particular interval and so what you would have to do is look at the criteria like continuity or closed interval or things like that and say yes it's applicable this theorem or no this theorem's not applicable here maybe because it's got an asymptote you know in your interval or something like that but then there's usually a part b uh, to where it says, okay, if the intermediate value, um, intermediate value theorem is applicable, then what would be the C value that would satisfy the intermediate value theorem for a blank K value? And they'll provide you a K, uh, K equals 10, K equals seven or whatever. And so what you'll have to do is figure out what C value would make the function be seven or 10 by setting it equal to it uh, and solving, right? So um, if that doesn't quite make sense, that's okay. Uh, if you watch our next video, we'll have an example on these things as, to, as far as what you'll be asked to do with the intermediate value theorem.